today we're going to do a paint along and I'm going to go as fast pretty pretty fast for this so if you need to pause the video you can and my kids with me um, if you are painting with me and you don't get to do say one or two of of the things I'm doing just skip it and then continue with me um, so if it takes you a little bit longer say to paint the branch just stop where you are and then continue with me and then you'll have time at the end of class to add the rest of it. Um, but I'm gonna go kinda quickly, and like I said at home, you can always pause this, because we're trying to get this done in 30 minutes. So this is the inspiration that we're going to do, a little bird in the winter time with these little berries here in the snow. And we're using um, this teal background paper, but any background paper would be fine, any color background paper. Um, but the first step is to take your temper cakes, and my kids are using dry temper cakes, and to take and start wetting the brown. And we're using, the first brush we're using is a flat, wider brush, as opposed to the other brush we're using is a round, a small, round brush. So we have our temper cake. You can also do this with watercolor as well. Now we're wetting our um, brown, moistening the brown. And I'm gonna just do this so you can see my paint trays as I use it, or pull them pull it in a little bit. So I'm moistening the brown and after I moisten, because my kids right now have been moistening the brown, then I'm just going to dip in the water and then lightly touch the brown again. Now I'm going to go from one edge of the paint and I'm holding my brush. This is where I hold my brush and I pretty much hold it up straight so that the point faces the ceiling. For the video demonstration so you can see it, I'm going to come a little bit to on an angle, but if you hold it up straight, if you let just the tip of the brush touch your finger, you can see how it just drags down. So the brush is barely touching the paper and you drag across the paper. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. And I'm starting diagonally, I'm gonna do a diagonal line near the bottom of the page, doesn't matter exactly where, and my diagonal's gonna swoop across to the upper corner. Now it doesn't have to touch the upper corner up here, just somewhere in the vicinity it's ending. So we're lightly dipping in the water, then I'm touching the moistened tempera. I'm going from one side and just a continuous swoop line across the page diagonally up and just leave it. We're gonna add all kinds of other stuff. We're layering this color and we're gonna treat this almost like a watercolor picture or a watercolor painting. But we're layering our temperas, so just and if, you, and if you miss a line, say some of this produces paint or shows paint, some doesn't, don't worry about it. Just do it one time and that's it. So we're laying it and leaving it. Now I wanna create, so I'm gonna dip in my water again. I'm gonna move this over here so you can see. But when I dip in the water again, I'm barely touching the water, and then I'm gonna just barely touch the temper cake. And then I'm just gonna go up, and I'm doing it vertical up slight at a slight angle now i'm going to do it again uh, my brush is pretty loaded i'm going to come down and kind of go across almost horizontal but not a perfectly straight line and then i'm going to give a couple more branches up here i'm loading up my brush again and just doing it up kind of having it at a point and then i'm going to skip a space come out i want to connect it to the branch and then I'm just gonna do it. Watch how I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna press and lift up. Just kind of flick it out. And do a really small one here. Just with the tip, pull out. So I have a little bit of composition. Now, I'm not gonna load up my brush again. Do you see this really faint line that goes behind the bird? Okay, I'm not gonna load up again. I'm just gonna go in the water let me show you how I go in my water. I'm barely touching the water, okay, and I'm wiping it off. And now I'm just going to come in here and do a just a faint line behind. I may have wiped off too much. It shows right here. I'm going to barely touch. I did wipe off too much. Right there, just a faint line behind my bird. And that's going to dry. This wets the paper. The, the first one I did wet the paper quite a bit. So it looked like it was there, but when it dries, it's gonna faint out to nothing. All right, now I'm gonna um, go ahead and start in on my bird. 
So I'm gonna go wash this brush and I'm gonna go in with my small brush. And the remainder of what we're gonna be doing is with the small brush. So I'm wetting my small brush and I'm gonna go into a white. And our whites are pretty muddied. My white is pretty muddied as well, that's okay. Um, if, if the white, because this is an elementary school, so sometimes we have little kids that use this and it's almost black, well then we wipe it off. But if it's muddied like mine, you're okay. I'm just gonna start wetting a section. And actually the muddied white is kind of, it's okay. It'll give it a grayish value, which we do need. We need this gray. So I'm wetting my white and loading it up on my brush. See how it's loaded? And I'm gonna come in here now. I'm going in the dead center of my page. Let me move this over. So I'm finding the dead center of my page and I'm gonna go ahead and put a line. Now I'm holding this brush right down near the metal and I'm using the tip of my brush to touch the page. Let me show you what I don't do. I never smash my brush like this. This is gonna give me a big fat, can you see that? Line. I barely touch the paper as I draw with the tip. Oh, you can't see it because it's on white paper. But let me show you in here, I'll bring this up. I barely touch as I draw. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on my brush. That'll give me a really skinny line. So I'm gonna extend this and I'm going up. Just extend it up. I'm gonna bring this line a little bit over so it almost looks, well, it almost looks like a part of a circle, semicircle. Now I'm gonna come diagonally down. This is gonna make a tail. So a longer line down. I'm gonna wet my brush and I'm gonna come back up and around. This is like an end curve. Now I'm gonna add a wing in here. This is gonna be at a semi-curve. This will be probably where the wing ends. So I'm gonna curve it and bring it around. From here, I'm just gonna give some little brush lines. This is gonna start filling in my feathers. So we did the line here, and then we did the curve here. This is an end curve. Now the wing, I make just a curve here. I'm mimicking this curve. And then this is another opposite curve. So this is a downward curve, or an upward curve. So I start from here, it almost looks like a leaf. So this shape is almost a leaf shape in here. There, let me get, that's better so it's not so crooked. Now what I'm gonna do, let me get my little, picture up here is now I'm just going to add some little lines inside and this doesn't have to be solid color the, it's okay to show um, the color in the background here the, coming through which is fine but I'm just doing little feather strokes and I'm making this a little bit thicker the tail just a few more strokes but I want to end the tail real skinny real skinny on this end and come up now I'm going to come under his little face here and when I'm doing this, I'm putting very little water on my brush and I'm making it pretty creamy. I don't want it to be sopping wet with water, okay? And I'm going, so if you imagine this little head halfway. So I'm just gonna press some lines in because I'm gonna keep it, the top needs to be a little bit black and then this is just the white underneath his head. And then I'm gonna give some more strokes down here because I want this to be brighter white. Now I'm gonna take the very, very tip of my brush and I always twist my brush. See how I'm spinning it? Let's, I'll do it in front of the blue so you can see it. I'm slightly rotating with my fingers. Now I rotate, I just rotate it like this, the brush, and I'm doing it in the paint, twisting it. That way I get a real beautiful point now I'm gonna do the legs, so I'm coming down diagonal, down diagonal. So it's almost like an 11 on its side, on a diagonal. And I'm using just the tip, and I'm coming 
onto the branch and around the branch. Now my brush is getting a little bit dry, so I'm barely touching the paint or the water. And I'm just doing a little toe this way and a curve. Now, now that I have this, the brush a little bit, uh, has it loaded up with some white, I'm just gonna take my brush and I'm laying it almost flat on the paper at a slight angle. And I'm bringing, let me bring this in a little bit so you can see it better. Okay, and I'm bringing, let's see. And I'm brushing, now watch first, I'm gonna lay it, brush it and just lift. So it looks like a little snow is kind of stuck on the branches. And I'm not gonna load up my brush again. And I'm just gonna come across a little bit here and you want it to be this freeform shape. I'm just gonna add a little bit of snow on my branch that way. And I'm gonna do the same coming down. Just barely hit it. I'm not getting any more white, I'm just using the white that's left on my brush. I hope there's not too much glare, I'm seeing a little bit of glare. I'm gonna come down here. Again, it's almost flat, it's not up like a soldier. And I'm just laying it across. This is really beautiful, the way this partially gets on here. You want that natural feel. You don't want it to be just a solid white blob or a wet solid blob. And then I'm gonna do the same over in here. Just barely hit randomly. And then take this and wisp it down, just using what's on your brush. You don't wanna overdo the snow either. I'm gonna do it this branch and just leave it. So now I have some snow on my branches, which is fine, it's really nice. I'm gonna wash my brush now, and I'm gonna go into the yellow and just give a little bit of a yellow highlight. I'm not quite sure the name of this bird, it almost looks like a sparrow to me. So, so my brush is not loaded with yellow, it has like a tint of yellow in it, okay? And I'm just gonna do light yellow strokes, not a lot, and up in here too. Just a little bit. Then I'm gonna wash my yellow and go back into my white. And I'm just gonna do a little bit of tiny short strokes on top. And it's kind of making it like a nice, nice creamy color. And I'll do a couple strokes on the tail of this creamy color. Yeah. Now I'm gonna take some white. And you wanna make sure you really twist out your brush so it's a nice point, because we're gonna do the beak. No, but the beak is layered, see? And actually on this one, you can see how I outlined it with the white when you see it close up. And then I changed the shape of it. But we want a little background color in here. So I'm gonna come in the middle. Now for this, it's really tiny line, so I am right down here near the end of my brush with my fingers and I'm resting on my paper and I'm using just the tip of my brush because if I press hard, it's gonna to get too fat of a line. So I'm coming out. Oh, I need a little bit more water because I'm not, it's too dry by the time I talked. So come out because I wanna ensure a really tiny beak. Then I'm gonna come from the edge and come in. I'm not gonna to touch the end again. And then on the top, come down. So I'm gonna draw a line down and just fill it in. Since we have a dark color paper, we need to give a little background color to the beak. I don't want my blue paper showing. Now, like I said, you don't want puddles here. And in this particular bird, it's pretty small. I'm gonna add some more white lines on top. These white lines come from the wing up, that's, so that's the direction I'm doing. And these are just short, tiny strokes coming down here. 
Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put, go back into the brown, and I'm gonna give a little bit of detail into my bird first with brown. This would be where the black will go. But I wanna layer it so it's not pitch black. I'm gonna layer it so it starts with the brown. I'm gonna make sure I don't have, I'll show you how I clean up. Twisting it up in here. I twist it into the dish so I have a tiny point on my brush. And now I'm gonna put in some of these detail lines. So I'm gonna show you what they're gonna be. I'm gonna do some long highlights in here for the tail. I'm trying to define the feathers now. I'm gonna do some feathers in here, but you see they're different strokes. These are longer and these are shorter as it meets the head. So I'm gonna do a longer stroke here. Now, that's a bit dark, so I'm barely touching the water here because I wanna lighten it a bit. And I'm gonna define the wing so I'm gonna come back with short strokes. And I'm gonna give a little shadow under here with short little curves coming in. So the feathers come from the edge of the bird in. So these are tiny little strokes. And then I have a little bit of a shadow, tiny little fur coming down here, or feathers rather. Under the beak, so I'm near the beak, I'm gonna outline the beak with the brown, the bottom only. And then I'm gonna do a few tiny, let me blow this up so you can see it. Let's focus it a little bit better. These are tiny, so my brush is barely touching the paper three or four tiny little strokes here. This is just gonna give a little feather texture. Shadows, the gray white feather shadows. Now, I'm gonna go into my white. And then I have a little bit of like black or dark color down here. Some on the dish, for my kids, ours isn't a large dish, but it's a circular dish. So if you go into your blue dish, you'll have an area that has some dirty paint. Just touch any dark color. Because it's gonna, it's just gonna, it's just gonna give a little bit of dark gray color. So we want some gray. That's what we're trying to achieve. And I'm just taking some gray paint And if you're at home and don't have these dirty dishes like we do, um, you can just make some gray paint with barely touching some black. And I'm doing short, This, these are longer strokes here. And then I'm having a longer one in the tail. Just touch the tail a little bit so we have a little bit of gray feathers. Are my fifth grades able to find that gray color? So you load up your brush with white and then any area that's grayish, you just touch that area. Even with near the blue or the black paint, you'll see a little bit of that color. And just do short choppy gray lines here. And I'm doing it right on top of and next to the brown. And it just mutes this. Actually, if you do a little gray patch, if you have a really dry gray, you don't want it to be wet. I'm just doing this with dry gray. It's a little dot or circle here, paint it out. You don't want to puddle because the next thing we do is going to be the, um, I'm gonna put a little bit of short white on top here too. So, so I'm layering my colors and mixing them. The next thing we're gonna do is the black. And I don't want, um, my paper to be wet if I do black. Because if you have a paper that's wet and your little fine lines are black, you'll get what's called bleeding. Puddles will just make and make a big mess. So I'm loading up my black now so it's pretty creamy. Here. 
I don't want my black to be really wet. I want it to be creamy. So we haven't used the black yet today. I'm twisting my brush and just with the tip, and I'm not outlining. Let me show you what I did on this bird. I'm not outlining the whole wing, okay? I'm doing little tiny lines. First, I'm gonna do this longer line, and then I'm doing little tiny feather lines. The black is just a little bit of accent and showing shadow. So I'm gonna do a little line like this, just kind of like on the edge. And then I'm doing tiny, and I start low and I kind of flick up, just tiny little lines to show that there is a uh, some feathers here. I'll put another one over in here too. And I'm gonna do the same under his body, but I'm not going over the whole length of this body. I'm just gonna do a little bit near his feet tiny little lines coming up and then just really tiny lines right here so it barely touches the paper under i'm tracing the line again under his beak and here i'm just doing a little patch he has a little patch of and i'm curving this out he has a little patch of brown or black under his beak. And then I'm gonna put a line in between the beak. Now that's barely touching. So when you do it, you wanna rest your hand. Let me show you what my hand's doing. This part of my hand is resting on the paper. So I'm only touching the tip of my paintbrush to the paper. So now I'm gonna be able to draw if your eye is dry, draw the circle. Put a little black dot in the middle. Now around this, this top part, I'm gonna start lines diagonally for feathers. And then the top section of his head, lines in here, is solid black, right to the beak. So this is solid black. And then you just connect the beak real careful. Now I'm coming down the back of him just with little tiny lines. And then, did I get all my black in? Pretty much, yeah. Now I'm washing my brush really good and I'm going back into the white because this looks really stark, my black. It's not muted. So I'm washing it good, getting into the black. So now I'm gonna bring in some white. Let me show you here. See how it's like muted? And the white kind of comes over some of this black here. I just wanna soften some of these edges because mine are a bit hard here. So I'm just layering some white on top. Just using the tip. And I'm gonna take and just hit the edges of these right in here. The white's almost transparent anyways. Just mute, mutes it a little bit. And I am gonna bring back right in here. I want a little bit of shadow on his toes. So I went into the black. I have some white on my brush still. And I'm just gonna go under the toe here, a little bit of a shadow. And on this side, just a little bit. And when you're satisfied with your bird, put in a little bit of brown strokes, just light brown. So I have it mixed with my white. 
just going to do a little bit of brown stroke here. So it's a very muted brown here. And now I'm going to go in and do little bits with the brown, light brown. I'm going to do, oh, let me bring this back so you can see it. The little um, stems, so a bit coming off of this, just pull. And my brown is a little watery, a little bit. And I'm just coming up, curving down. I'm going to bring this using just the tip. Can you see that one? Yeah. I'm just going to draw some little curves or hooks almost. And then these are the like the stems that the berries are growing off of, but just really tiny. And again, I'm resting the, my palm. It's almost like I made a fist. I'm resting that down and barely touching the paper to get these really thin lines. And I'm gonna do a grouping of three right here and one shorter one. That way I can make the little cherry balls or whatever they are, they're little berries on my branches. So now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna save this brown here that's on my brush. I have some in the side here. And I'm gonna go into the red now, and I wanna start forming my berries. And I'm gonna show you how to form a few of them. I'm gonna do just a little round one here. And I'm gonna draw them, and now you wanna make sure that the berries are all pretty much the same size. So I'm going by inside the fingernail and just doing off of that curve there. I want it to be about the size of that. So about a quarter of an inch circular. So if you can, try and make them the, all the same size. I'm just gonna stick a grouping of three in here. So I'm gonna draw a really, I started a little bit smaller. And then if you need to get it a little bit bigger, you can just extend it like this, like so. So I start with a grouping and I have them overlapping each other in most cases. And then I'll do a grouping here. So there's a grouping of three. I'm just gonna do a single one right here. And you can put these exactly, you know, anywhere you want. So I'm roughly gonna do them. And I'll put one on the end of this one here. And then I'm gonna do several over in here. Whoops. In this grouping. And I'm gonna show you how I finish off the berries. I'm gonna do a grouping. This is gonna be a grouping of, let's see, this is a grouping of six. So I draw them in, the circles. See how they're almost, they're not in a perfect row. I'm gonna draw it again, fill it in. Actually, I'll do a grouping of five, just to make it odd. Many artists work with that five, seven, three, And then I'm just gonna put two little stragglies up in here. And there's no right or wrong to where you're putting these. But if you want to follow along, you can. Let's do two like that. And then I'm gonna do the little grouping here. So I draw the circle. And some of them in that grouping, you want to make sure that they do overlap. The cluster, it's almost like you're doing a cluster of grapes. Yesterday I actually ate, was washing grapes and I had the biggest bunch of grapes that I've ever seen. It was really, it was about probably about 15 inches long or maybe more. I was surprised at how big that group was. Um, but here's a few clusters. Now with these little berries, I'm gonna show you how I layered my colors. Um, now I'm gonna put some shadow and then a little highlight on the berries. You can see here how there's a little shadow and then the white is the highlight. And then we'll be done. So I'm going to show you how I do the shadow. I'm going to do a little cluster here. I'm going to do a grouping of five. 
Actually, I'm going to do it a little bit longer because I wanted to. How about seven? Okay. Now I'm going to take my brown color and add some shadow. So I have some of my brown on the dish here. And then I'm going to go into that black, a black color, and I'm just going to lightly touch that black color just to make the brown a little bit darker. And I'm just going to go underneath using the tip of, I have a little white speck, using the tip of the brush. Let me bring this in so you can see it better. Let's go to the first clump I did so that they're dry. And I'm just using the tip of my brush, gonna go a little bit on the bottoms. And if something is overlapping here, I'm just gonna go to the edges here, a little bit. And just same brush, a little bit of color to show a little bit of shadow on the bottoms. Oops, you didn't see that. I'm going in to that dirty color again. It's brown with a little bit of black. I'm doing a little bit of, sh just a little line here. The shadows. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Let's go back over in here. Just at the bottoms. And I can do that same color. Let me get some more water. Even put a little bit of that at the bottom of the bottom of the branch where you see some shadow. So in everything you want to do the highlights, the medium color, and a little bit of the shadow. Put a little bit of shadow here. And it's on the bottom edge, and this is on the now this is on the side to the right, so all the right sides is where I'll give my shadow to. Just a little bit. And all the bottom edges. Now I'm gonna wash my brush and go into the white. And I'm gonna try and find the cleanest patch of white. Now if you have a really muddied white, just add some water to it. Take the clean part of your paper towel and just dab it. And now I have a section of clean white. And if you start off with some clean water, you'll end up with a nice clean white. And the highlight is really small. And I'm just gonna lightly touch, and I'm gonna try and do it on the same area of all the, of all the berries because the light source say is coming this way and so it's picking up the highlight of it and it's the so to show round I'm just doing a little bit of a let me show you here so you can see it it's almost like a curve just a little bit mine's a little dry so I'm gonna add a little bit more water to my brush and I'm wiping it out because you can't have it real watery. Just a little. And I'm doing it on the same space, almost the top curve of the shape. And this is gonna dry muted. It's a little watered down, so it'll dry not so bright as what you're seeing here. Because you don't want your highlights to stick out. And that is basically how you do the little bird. I'm going to pull some of this, give him some more white in here. I want to mute those lines a little bit more. But this is basically how you do the little chickadee or the little sparrow, or the little winter bird. So I hope you enjoy it, and let me know how yours came out in the comments.